Hi, this is Suzanne in Ohio. I'd like to share with you today what I've been able to do with images of old handkerchiefs and an assortment of old textiles. You can see here I have a pocket, or my intention for it is a pocket, uh, for a journal, but it can be a gift all by itself if you want it to be, or it could be a gift card holder because it is a pocket, so you could slip anything right in there. If you're going to use it for a pocket in a journal, you can make your little tags, assortment of tags, and slip them in the pocket. In this case, I also created a tuck spot on the front of the pocket, and then of course the actual pocket itself. So let me tell you how I did that. I'm using old book pages at the moment, and I have a wonderful old book um, big, a big book, and the pages are just aged enough to be interesting, but they're not frail or, you know, crunchy yet. So I tore the, <coughs> excuse me, pages in two, just folded them over and zigzagged both sides. Kept it simple. Now on the front, I tore a slot here, rolled back the edges, and if, as you can see, I've inked them. And then I put a little piece of pattern paper in here like a gusset. And that just hooks in the theme and gives also an indication as to where the opening is in the pocket. So here's my handkerchief image. I just think they turned out beautiful. Uh, let me put the autofocus on and I'll show you up close what a wonderful image I got. It looks like you can reach down and pull on those threads if you'd want to. That just, I just loved how it, it, it copied so beautifully. Okay, so I, again, I left this as a tuck spot on the front so that you could have a small tag. And I just created one out of a scrap and slipped it in there to show you. And then you can have larger tags in the side. But these images of old handkerchiefs make beautiful um, additions. To, to all your paper arts work. All right, now, I want to point something out. If you look close, you can see here that you can see the words through the paper. And I want to explain to you how I got that. And it's also explained on another one of my videos. <coughs> Pardon me. But this is a normal piece of copy paper, 20 pound. Um, it was a Georgia Pacific or something like that. And I told before, and I'll tell you now, how I got it to be translucent. I seal almost all of my inkjet prints with wax, canning wax. The ones you get in big bars, big square bars, about like this. And I heat the paper with an iron at my ironing board and just quickly swipe over the wax while the paper is warm and then iron it into the paper again. If I want it, the paper to become translucent, I really wax it up heavy. And after it's thoroughly satura saturated with the wax, then I press it between two paper towels and take off any excess that there might be. So it makes it translucent and I love the effect where you can look through there and see the text. Okay, let me show you another one. Put that little tag back in there. Okay. This was another handkerchief. Um, this handkerchief had pansies on the corner. And I pretty much did the same thing. Stitched up the sides and waxed my paper. Of course, I ink stained it around the edges and tore this place and put a gusset in. And you can see. Again, you can see the text right through the paper because it's heavily waxed. By the way, after you iron it between paper towels, it doesn't really feel waxed anymore. It feels like vellum. So here was the corner of the, of the, of the handkerchief, and all it had on it was um, this applique embroidery on one corner and one little flower on the other. And of course, I didn't want to throw that away. So I made a tiny little pocket tag. So I'll create a miniature little tag and slip in there. 
Look how you can see through that waxed paper. So you can think of some fun things to do with that. Once the paper's waxed, it becomes translucent. But it's nothing more than normal copy paper. The lightweight, 20 pound. And that's why it absorbs so much wax when I seal it. Here's one more. This little handkerchief just had some real dainty little embroidery on it. And I created this pocket, put the gusset in it, and this is just a piece, a tag type thing uh, cut out of patterned scrapbooking paper. Gosh, I did put a tag in there. I haven't put, oh, I need to put a string on that. haven't put a string on that one yet. Okay, so that's the pockets I made with handkerchiefs. And then I want to show you what else I did with the handkerchiefs because they were so fun. All right, first of all, here's a print of one of my handkerchiefs. All right, I made these um, digital images by ironing all the handkerchiefs, laying them on my scanner, creating an image. And by the way, all my images are for sale in my Etsy store, which I can... Uh, put a link to my Etsy Etsy shop below and then if you need images now be sure and look through them they're in sets of five so the first one you see is only one of five so you'll have to search it out and see if there's anything in there you like so here's what it looks like the image of the handkerchief before I start and what I wanted to do was make an envelope with this but I didn't want to waste any of my image. So I came up with something that looks like this. All right, here's my envelope. And there, there you have it. So uh, it was just an amazing procedure. I was much astounded myself. I folded it like I wanted it and realized the scrap that I was going to cut off, I could use and make the inside of the flap. And a little piece of scrapbook paper as a liner just to give this a nicer look. But this is where you not sure how well that's showing up on camera. But that's what it's like. Everything is either glued or done with double-sided tape, maybe score tape. It depended on um, <clears throat> what I had handy at the time. After I sewed or glued this inside flap, I went around the sewing machine and zigzagged around all the edges of just the flap. And it looks pretty nice on both sides. And what a cute addition to a journal or... A gift envelope. Now, if you want to, after you create your envelopes, I brought a stack of things over here to show you, and I will probably do this as soon as I sit back down with these things. But if you have um, have your little pile of laces and things, then you can decide if you want to fussy them up with anything, like stitching this lace on the bottom or here's a pretty little I call these twirlies and decide what your paper needs and then just use some fiber scraps and doctor them up a little bit if you want to a tiny little embellishment right here you could even put um, what am I trying to think of oh, a brad right there and something and put a string on it so that you can tie it around there's so many ideas so many possibilities so here's a butterfly I cut out of just patterned paper and you could just do something like that put a little backing behind him it kind of makes him um, the focal point and then doctor up your envelope Let me move this out of the way so I want to show you a couple more envelopes that I created with all these handkerchief images. And there's one. And that's what I did with the inside of it. Let me see about my lighting here a second. 
when the sun comes out, it ruins all my settings that I had thought were just perfect. Okay, here's another one. Gorgeous old handkerchiefs. Now this handkerchief had, um, let's see if I can fix this. It had a scalloped edge on it, which I didn't want to cut out. See, there's the print at the scalloped edge, but I just straightened it out and left it on there. For this purpose, it's just fine. Okay, and another one. And again, I was able to have just enough scraps to, to line the inside flap. And then I had a little scrap that fit just perfect right there. So I didn't have to come up with another liner. And then when they're closed, it looks really nice. Purple, purple and pink flowers. And this one was interesting because it was not a symmetrical print in the corner, but it's still really nice. Tulips. Okay, so that's what I did with those envelopes. Let me show you how they look in their creating stage. Let's just get one over here. Let's do the yellow one. Okay. So I had a way of folding, and then as I folded, I just double-checked my dimensions from here to here, and from here to here, and there to there, just to make sure it was almost perfectly rectangle. And then here's how I begin to fold it up. Now you can see that this piece right here was what I cut off of this corner. And I went ahead and sewed it or glued it on the inside flap. But as I folded it, at first I made sure that I had my flap the way I wanted it. And then that gave me guidelines and I began to fold. And then I'll fold this down. And all I'll have to do is put a little piece of pattern paper in there as a liner. Clever. I just was so excited about it. Okay, here's one more that I've already cut apart. Now I cut it apart right there, and this was a piece of waste. So look at my pattern, fold the flap down, begin to fold these in. And that was on there. So begin to fold those in. And then you can see right here, this will be excess. So I'll just fold that down, <clears throat> cut that off. And then this will be the scrap for the inside of my flap. Just like that. I'll round it off and then stitch around it on the sewing machine. Okay, pretty easy. Well, it was after I figured it out. Okay. So I have one more kind of pocket here, and come on camera, there it goes. Okay, these pockets are similar, but I used a different element. I used um, copies of old textiles. This is needlepoint, this is cross stitch, I believe, and this is cruel. Now these old images, same thing, I just scanned them printed them, shrunk them down to the size I wanted to work with. So I'll show you the first one here, <clears throat> a flower, a cluster of flowers. Here's my pocket opening over here on this side. And I already created a few things to stick in there. A tag that doesn't have a string on it yet. Just a cluster of ivy leaves. And whatever can go with that. Uh, pattern paper from scrapbook paper and some of my little mushrooms. All right. Oh, I love this. This red pole cross stitch. I found it at the thrift store and it was it's big. It was inside a serving tray. You know, a wooden serving tray that has a piece of glass on it 
and I had no desire to set about refinishing that but I wanted the image so I just took it apart and kept the cross stitch and I've done many things with it so this is a little piece of organza with some pine cones on it you can see that just a little piece of fiber to pick up the colors red and this <clears throat> cross stitch was I guess intended to be Christmassy because it has um, holly and berries and mistletoe in it but who cares use it for whatever you want right okay I have a tag already in here uh, just one of those cutouts from a piece of pattern paper scrap of paper and that's that's all I stuck in that one I guess but this envelope was created almost exactly the same the only thing I did was fold the sides over before I stitched it down and folded down so that you could see it was an opening okay this little barn was a cruel piece probably about I don't know eight by six and copied it and shrunk it and printed it doctored up the edges stitched it around on the sewing machine with a um, cross stitch and just added these leaves and when I put the image down on the front of this pocket I left the image itself as a pocket that's why I stuck that leaf in there just to let it be known you could get your fingers down in there and then here's the pocket for this one and I put um, a picture hydrangea because this is fall you can see the trees in this image are have their fall leaves that's why I added the fall leaves and hydrangeas start drying out in the fall by the way my sister um, just took some of our hydrangeas this summer and laid them right on the scanner and that's what we got so don't forget about all your botanicals too making images of them okay I thank you for watching let me show you a couple of these just one more time and Use your artwork and use your items in more than one way. Scan everything, make an image, and as the ideas come, you'll be able to make many wonderful things out of it. All right, this is Suzanne in Ohio. Uh, watch for me again on YouTube, and thank you all you YouTubers for sharing your techniques and tricks and ideas too. All right, thank you.